A end year sale of 50% off. Yes, everything at half price from 2nd November to 31st December. Visit our showroom at Panasar Center, Mombasa Road, opposite Airtel. There was a moment in time when we stopped attending physical classes to stay safe, but that did not mean that learning had to stop. At ZTech University, we continue to deliver the highest quality of education through technology and integrated innovation in educating our future leaders. We now have the go-ahead to go back on the quest of knowledge, to go back and search for solutions that our world needs. As we reopen to this new normal, we are committed to excellence. We have adhered to the Ministry of Health COVID-19 guidelines, keeping our students and the learning environment safe. We're back. We're safe. We're learning. We admit both self- and government-sponsored students for our degree, diploma, and certificate programs that are accredited by the Commission for University Education. ZTEC University. Invent your future. I compromise it all Either my skin is sensitive Or my back's against the wall You can have it all What? Always brings it all Okay Get it all with new Always Twin One Featherlight softness overall Even on the wings, girl And rapid dry channels Let me see you make a move Be it all, do it all, have it all Always Twin One Feathery Soft Asante sana Sasa Nini ni kingine ambacho unezo kamfanyia mschana wetu? Kila kitu Hata kufuwa nguo na Ariel Mpia. Unaniamini sasa? Ariel huondoa madu wa sugu kwa mwosho mmoja. Ijaribu leo uamini. Every day you hear news reports about the violence that children face. We face sexual violence that tears our lives apart. We are beaten in our homes while we are supposed to be safe and even in school. We are insulted and berated. If you see me being sexually abused, stop it. If you see me being beaten, stop it. If you see me being hit, stop it. If you see me being bullied, stop it. The violence against us will not end until you stop it. And the stories will remain the same until you change them. Any form of violence against children is wrong. Report cases of abuse to a trusted adult, children's officers, the police, or call the child helpline 116. Spot it and stop it. Nivea Men Deep Antiperspirant with the power of black carbon formula. 48 hour protection from sweat and bacteria. For a deep, clean feeling that lasts. New Nivea Men Deep Antiperspirant. Nivea Men, it starts with you. Official sponsor of Real Madrid. This is NTV. A very good evening to you. It is Sunday night and this is NTV Weekend Edition. It's been a busy day in the newsroom. These are among the stories we've been following up for you. Tonight. 
how many more health workers are we going to lose for the government of Kenya to realize that the situation on the ground is not as good. More frontline workers draw the line as COVID-19 infections and deaths among healthcare workers spike. Also tonight... Officers recovered some cannabis certificate that is banned. In the same house, there was uh, whiskey consumption. Uh, in the same house, there were used codoms. Police break up a house party in Nairobi. 44 teenagers and their host taken into custody. Plus, building battered bridges. As politicians get behind the push, Muslim leaders are pushing back. Postpone this thing. Let us address the COVID-19 issue. And also tonight... This is not easy. Seeing Vile Sasa Kumeja Kichaka, I can't trace my brother's grave. Ata Slabenya, I can't see it. It's quite sad. Eh? Theft, vandalism, neglect, and a space crunch. There's really no rest for the departed at the Langata Cemetery. Grave mistakes. Tonight's special report. This is Weekend Edition with Smriti Vidyarthi. Flora Atieno joins us in sign language interpretation. To our top story, tonight police are investigating another possible sex and drugs ring involving school children. As detectives last night arrested 44 school children and their host when they broke up a house party in Nairobi's Mountain View estate. The officers also seized various brands of alcohol and bang during the operation. Their host, a 41-year-old woman, is expected to be charged with a number of offences, including child exploitation, as Leila Mohammed now reports. The Kabeta police station was a flurry of activity Sunday morning. As anxious parents gathered to find out if their children are part of the 44 teenagers being held at the police station, Police officers had in the dead of the night taken the young ones into custody, having broken up their house party a few kilometers from this police station. Our officers got intelligence report that uh, there were some children who were, hold up, who were held up somewhere and uh, they moved in. Uh, the house was in a sorry state because in the same house, our officers recovered uh, some cannabis sativa that is bank. In the same house, there was uh, whiskey consumption. Uh, in the same house, there were used condoms. Police recovered unused packets of condoms from one of the rooms in the house. While the attention of the police was drawn to the goings-on just recently, neighbors have been complaining about an unusual gathering of teens this past few weekends and loud music. These children, some of them are in primary school, while others are in secondary schools. All do not come from Nairobi. We have some even coming from as far as Machakos. So our officers are on the ground uh, trying to unravel whatever has been happening. Back at the house, the unkempt nature of the home gave insights into the wild nights. A cramped bedroom littered with mattresses and other personal effects. Shoes were scattered around the corridor, some on the bathtub, more in another room. And an unwashed sufuria and a dirty sink filled with dishes welcomed us into the kitchen. The empty liquor bottles show that alcohol was here in high demand. For the 44 young children who were found here last evening by DCI, officers who have now been taken into custody by the children's department as investigations continue. Court case would not be the first option. However, it remains an option. But uh, we are exploring of ways of making these children uh, to be in very safe hands. So th that would be the first priority. 
Police are trying to understand how the children, 26 boys and 18 girls, some from as far as Kiambu and Machakos counties, slipped away from their parents' homes. They are also trying to establish why 41-year-old Millicent Givinji hosted them and how they got to her house. Some are alleging that there are harsh conditions at home. We are all aware that uh, most of the children are now at home because no schools are ongoing. And uh, some of them have, uh, in their own way, tried to evade uh, being under the custody of their parents. So they will give different versions of why they are here. This discovery comes in the back of revelations of an online group that has been luring schoolgirls to orgy house parties in Nairobi. The group uses an Instagram name, Kati Gang ENT, to lure the girls for the orgies that run for days on end. The DCS Child Protection Unit has been investigating an incident where six girls who had been missing for almost a week were found in a house in Nairobi after their parents raised an alarm. They're all teenagers in high school. Police say the girls had been shooting videos of their activities while naked in a house in Thika and sharing them with a limited number of their friends. Three of the girls are still in police custody as the said host, a doctor, is being sought. Leila Mohammed, NTV. Totally disturbing and uh, clearly the issue is more complex than we may think. Parents, please try be there for your children, understand them and keep a close watch on them. That's a story we'll certainly be following for you. Elsewhere, COVID-19 has robbed the life of yet another health worker. And medical unions are not taking the deaths of their staff lightly. The Kenya Union of Clinical Officers has now issued a strike notice following what they term as neglect, unpreparedness and COVID-19 mismanagement by the Ministry of Health and county governments. They argued that the ministry has spent millions to formulate policies and guidelines, none of which they say have been implemented. Helen Ara has more. It is artwork that aptly depicts the battle that healthcare workers are fighting, scrambling to save the lives of others while struggling to catch their own breath. David Makori Orare is a clinician who took his last breath last night. He becomes the latest healthcare worker whose life has been taken by the coronavirus. Orara's death raises the number of clinical officers who have succumbed to COVID-19 to seven. We're here to ask the Kenyan government today, how many more of us are going to die so that you can realize how dire the situation is? A total of 33 healthcare workers have died from COVID-19 to date, and at least 2,542 healthcare workers have been infected. Fed up of waiting on the government, the Kenya Union of Clinical Officers has now issued a warning. They've released a 14-day strike notice effective tomorrow, demanding that the government provides healthcare workers with adequate quantities of PPE kits at all levels of health service delivery exempts all healthcare workers belonging to vulnerable groups from active frontline duty, provides a comprehensive medical cover for workers who contract the virus and their families, increases and harmonizes the health risk allowance for healthcare workers, and scale up on all clinical offices on contractual basis to a permanent contract. The union warns that if the government fails to meet these demands at the end of 14 days, all its members and other healthcare workers will go on an all-out strike. The warning comes in addition to a 21-day strike notice issued by KMPDU, which is set to elapse in the first week of December. And if the unions act upon their threats, the ramifications will both be disastrous and devastating. But the unions are stressing that the lives of frontline workers matter too. The CS Health told us that we have enough PPEs. In, in fact, we are producing them locally. And we are even exporting to other African countries. Why is it so hard then to ensure that our people are protected? And that is the question on the lips of millions of Kenyans. Government of Kenya, over to you. Helen Aura, NTV. 
All right, well, let's now turn our focus to the COVID-19 numbers and 968 more people have tested positive for the coronavirus from a sample size of 6,610, bringing the national caseload up to 77,372. Out of the new cases, 888 are Kenyans and 80 are foreigners. 14 more people have succumbed to the disease, and that raises the total number of fatalities to 1,380. Meanwhile, 155 patients have recovered, 110 from the home-based care program, and 45 discharged from various hospitals. And this now brings the total recoveries to 51,507. Meanwhile, Nairobi County has the highest number of new infections with 421. Mombasa has 91 cases, Kilifi 88, Busia 73, and Kiambu 54. Well, in-person court operations and services at the Meru Law Courts have been suspended following a coronavirus outbreak. According to a memo issued by Chief Justice David Maraga today, staff at the courts, advocates and their staff tested positive for the virus, prompting the decision. The suspension, which begins tomorrow, will be effective for two weeks to allow for intervention measures to prevent the spread of the virus. The CJ has, however, urged the court to conduct urgent matters virtually. Now, Muslim leaders in the country have rejected the push to amend the constitution through the Building Bridges initiative. The leaders say the BBI offers no apparent benefits to Kenyans to warrant constitutional reforms and will in fact claw back the gains made by the 2010 constitution. Vincent Odwa reports. After three weeks of critically analyzing the BBI document through the Muslim technical team, the leadership of the Muslim community in Kenya has returned a verdict. There are no apparent benefits BBI will bring to the nation to demand constitutional changes. BBI proposals will claw, will claw back the gains have had in the new constitution dispensation. C. BBI will bring an imperial president which makes Kenyans have rejected. Please postpone this thing. Let us address the COVID-19 issue. The leaders say some of the BBI proposals will weaken the checks and balances in government that were guaranteed under the 2010 Supreme Law and weaken the role of parliament and other independent government institutions. They called on the handshake partners to reorganize their priorities. I think the president must be conscious that the life of, to save the life of Kenya is more important than to change the constitution at this particular time. There are people today who cannot afford to buy two kilograms of unga. They are going hungry. On his part, ANC Lydia Musalia Mudavadi wants the offensive proposals in the document amended before the publication of the Constitution Amendment Bill 2020. And instead of having a contested situation, we can have a united, a broad-based consensus arrangement na tuendembele. But this Sunday, a group of legislators and leaders from central Kenya met in Kiambu County, where they continued their BBI crusade in the grassroots. With a familiar message, the train of change had already left the station. Religious leaders have in recent weeks expressed their reservations with the push for a referendum in the middle of a pandemic. A few weeks ago, the Kenya Conference of Catholic Bishops called for consensus, even as they questioned the wisdom of pushing through with a referendum while the country is in the throes of COVID-19. Vincent Odur, NTV. All right, education matters now and plans to reopen schools in January may take a hit as giant teachers union, NUT, now threatens a strike to protest the discrimination of its members by the Teacher Service Commission. NUT Secretary General Wilson Socion says the Teacher Service Commission sidelined NUT members after their members were left out of promotions and salary increments. NTV's Naoma Sampao with more. NUT Secretary General
General Wilson Sosion is escalating the union's battle with the teacher's employer, TSC, accusing it of starving it of much-needed cash to run its operations. The giant teachers' union recently shut down 110 offices in several parts of the country owing to a cash crisis. Members have fallen behind on paying up their dues. The TSC also failed to remit contributions for the months of July, August and December 2019. We have isolated the employer as, 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 as a father of impunity in this country. In the protracted battle between the union and the teacher's employer, TSC has excluded not members from PACs, including promotions provided for under a 2016 collective bargaining agreement. We sign a CBA, we have a certificate, but the employer decides unilaterally to blacklist, to suspend the CBA, blacklist the members of NAT, suspend the CBA, deny our members promotion. That really is not anything that will create peace. And nobody, and the narrative that TSC is selling to government is wrong. The stalemate has seen some teachers defect to other unions in order to benefit from the CBA. The abrasive and long-serving Secretary General has himself come up against a ruthless coup. And with the union's election set for the 4th of January, Sosion hopes the members will still be on his side. We don't have even a single letter of any teacher withdrawing from the union. What is evidence is corruption at TSC. We must get our register back if there has to be peace. And our members must participate in elections. The dispute now threatens to dent January plans to fully reopen schools. The only medicine that TSC understands is a strike. Maybe that's what they're asking for. And then we, if that is what they want, we, have, we shall have no option but to prepare for it. Some 100,000 teachers have been sidelined from the pay rise under the CBA that was to run between 2017 to 2021 as NAT moved to court for orders to set aside career progression guidelines that the TSC was already implementing. TSC then ran a separate payroll for NAT members effectively blocking them from the plum pay deal, saying it was in compliance with court orders. Nayoma Sumpao, NTV. All right, stay with us for some stunning pictures as we take our first break on the broadcast. Our moment of calm tonight is the Dubai Butterfly Garden and it is home to more than 15,000 butterfly species and is located inside Dubai's Miracle Garden. With nine custom-built domes, the habitat covers a total area of 1,800 meters squared and can host about 300 people. Visitors get to admire the evolution of these fascinating insects from their caterpillar life and the formation of their chrysalis to their colourful flight. Sona moja imetengenezwa kwa njia speciali ili kupambana na maumivu kwa haraka. Sona moja ina aspirin kama kiungo. Sona moja kitulizo kamili. Maumivu ya kizidi pata ushauri wa daktari. Honestly babe, what is chai bila maziwa? I know darling. Like if this lactose free milk, is it even real milk? Why don't you ask the expert? Me! Gold Crown Lactose Free Milk is a 100% natural cow's milk. The only difference is that the lactose in the milk has already been broken down, making it easier to digest. So no more funny feelings in the tummy. Wow! And it tastes just like regular milk. Because it is! And you've heard it from the cow's mouth. Uh... <laughs> 
What a relief! Thank you, Gold Crown. If regular milk makes you feel uncomfortable, try Gold Crown Lactose-Free Milk. Milk that loves you. For a better tomorrow, don't forget to do the one, two, three with Colgate every night. Fresh Fry Premium Cooking Oil now has a new look and an advanced spout and seal. Triple refined, zero cholesterol and natural vitamin E. Fresh Fry, always hot friendly. Now it's even more cooking friendly. Fresh Fry, the premium cooking oil for healthy living. When I got the admission letter to Alliance Girls High School, I wasn't excited because my parents weren't employed at that time. So I wouldn't have gone to school without financial support. I heard about the Equity Wings to Fly program. I applied and I was able to get in. They paid for everything, literally everything that I needed. After high school, we were recruited into the Equity Leaders program and we got an internship at the bank and college counseling. I was expecting to go to school in September, but due to the pandemic, we were told that the classes are going to be online. Equity conducted sessions on how to adapt to the new changes and how to maneuver through the classes. I'm also doing the equity mentorship for the Wings to Fly students who are still in school. After getting into Ashes University, I was still supported by equity. Once I finish, I'd like to pursue um, a master in engineering and after all that, I'd like to start my engineering company. I'd like also to start an initiative like the one Equity started here yeah, to sponsor students through their education, supporting their dreams. What is this? A charm with an R? Yes. It's a woman's charm. For sure it doesn't belong to my boss, Rafael. Isidro! 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 Yes, take him to the hospital. I'll meet you there. I've got a girlfriend now and I'm crazy about her. her. Come, go. come, I'll introduce her to you. Renata! Jeronimo Linares. Get your value-added plot today by cash or through our installment plan. Call us today on 0790-300-300. Optiven Limited, the pay status in real estate. Thanks for staying with us. At the Langata Cemetery in the capital, Nairobi, there's really no rest for the departed. The sting of death for many families is amplified by the theft the vandalism and the neglect of their loved one's final resting places. And as Ngina Kirori uncovered, at this shrinking domain of the dead, not everyone has space to rest for all eternity, as corruption at City Hall ensured there was no alternative resting place for Nairobi's dead. So what place is there for tomorrow's departed? Here now is that special report. The last time Joy Mwangi was at the Langata Cemetery in the capital was shortly after she and her family laid her brother to rest in 2015. Five years later, she's back here to try and find her brother's grave, nestled somewhere in this overgrowth. She's hoping to trace the small concrete slab that marks her brother's final resting place. I think it's, it must be somewhere around here. Yeah. I do a these slabs. But minutes later, she comes up empty. And that was a doctor. Oh, it was a doctor? Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, I'll pass second born. I'm the last born and now my sister. Mm. So, it is quite sad. Eh? Mm. Because even if you say, there's nothing, there's nothing to. Mm. The family would have loved to bury him at their rural home but their budget could only secure them space on the temporary side. Yes, around two, so. In this now shrinking domain of the dead. We had to travel all day from Embu to, unfortunately, we had land issues and family. So, to travel all the way from Embu, Namulietu, to Kalipia City Motari, the permit, 
then sasa tukakujukula ngata saa kumzika Joy and her family were guaranteed that her brother would rest undisturbed for only 7 years in the heart of a city that is fast running out of graveyard space those who tend to the graves here say they have to disturb their peace after some time as they scramble to create room shimo yenyewe ilikuwa fupi like ungesimama hivi unge wenye walikuwa na chimba actually ilikuwa nafika mahali hapa so that means maybe ilikuwa maybe around 3 feet kwa kichimba wanasema huyo mwenye ako chini ana complain haizi hawezi pitisha hapo at the end of the day you have nothing to do naambia tu ni sawa sasa venye nimerudi after a few weeks nilikuja nikapata sasa slab ime slide kuna kishimo yani shimo hata yeye mwenyewe unaweza crawl in na utoshe nikakuja tu nikaekelea maua nikajaribu kutoa watu tweeds na mikono i remember even there was a barrier just next there eh? wa mama wengine walikuwa wananiangalia wana wananiurumia wananiombea msichana achana tu nazo tu zitamea tu bado but nilingoa tu na mikono imagine na nikamaliza Meters away, Veronica Mwangi's grave sits fallen in a thick bush. Veronica passed away in 2017 in India where she was seeking treatment for cancer. Her daughter, Kezia Nyambura, remembers her mother's last painful moments as she slipped away. As she sat by her hospital bed, her mother told her of a beautiful home that she was being called into. Nyambura put up a beautiful gravestone at her mother's final resting place at the cemetery and even fenced it but her mother is still far from home We came we painted her grave very well with my family my sister my daughter and my uncle Then after like two weeks when we were supposed to come back and finish the clearing of the weeds and everything to prepare for her anniversary my friend took a photo when she was somewhere here in Langate I think she passed by to check on mom's grave and unfortunately the metal bars that were around her grave that we painted were not there we chose here cuz her mom is also here so we wanted her to be with her mom and she was a single mother so yeah consigned to the periphery these final resting places the homes of the invisible dead are still haunted by the airs of neglect there is no one to man the points of entrance no running water and no lighting The metal bars that hem them in have been broken, stolen and sold for scrap metal. Here and there are craters in the loose red soil caused by hoofs of grazing cattle. Of vehicles rolling over the graves, crushing the weak earth into the cavities below. The Langata Cemetery first came up in 1956 as Kenya was nursing independence hopes. Thousands have been buried in the 117 acre piece of land since the first body that of Robert Lockhead was interred in September 1958 according to a freed ledger marking each burial for more than half a century. But not every death has been set down just as city's architecture reveals its history so do the headstones in the graveyard. There are no records of those buried in the temporary section and even in death the rich and poor hardly ever interact. The cost of a plot on the permanent side is nearly five times that of the temporary side. A spot on the temporary side costs about 3000 shillings for a child and 7000 shillings for an adult. For the permanent side, one must part with at least 15,500 shillings for a child and at least 30,500 shillings for an adult. The permanent side allows families to put up a gravestone. The cheaper bury and go option on the temporary side is what a number of city dwellers have been forced to take up due to financial constraints. Here, where new graves are dug in between the old ones. First of all, this is not easy. Seeing vile sasa kumeja kichaka i can't trace my brother's grave at a slab yenye i can't see it it's quite sad eh? in 2010 a corruption scandal saw government officials pocket over 200 million shillings that was meant to secure alternative cemetery land in athi river and ease the space pressure the land in question was also deemed too rocky for a cemetery former nairobi mayor joffrey majiwa was among those charged <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.
The city cemetery's operations have now been transferred to the Nairobi Metropolitan Services, which now has the unenviable task of finding room to house the city's dead. We are fully aware that Langata Cemetery is becoming now full, but we are working with uh, Ministry of Lands to ensure that we can get another space, even if it is from Kenya Forest, in order to get uh, some uh, land uh, where we can uh, extend. But for those whose loved ones are still resting here, there are fewer options. I only wish they will do something about it. So at least family are because surely not everyone can afford huko permanent. Not everyone has places to bury their loved ones. Mashamba inaleta shida. Issues mingi tu. For the families, the warmth of the memories is all they can hold on to. Just miss everything. I miss her so much. She was our everything. She was a single mom. She raised us alone. But I thank God the way she left us with my sister. We've all, we've, we are together with her sisters, the uncles. They've never left us. We're all together. But we miss her. She left a gap that no one can fill. From its inception, Langata Cemetery offered thousands of families a central place where they could lay their loved ones to rest. But that rest has been disrupted by the constant issues that have surrounded the cemetery and are yet to be resolved decades on. Gena Kedori, NTV, Nairobi. Gina Kirori, they're highlighting the major challenges that, is, that are disturbing the peace at the Langata Cemetery. Grave mistakes. Well, we certainly hope that something will be done to restore that peace. That is what the dearly departed deserve. At this point, we now fly into our next break with uh, these incredible Saudi acrobat planes. G20 branded Saudi airplanes and seven Saudi Hawk Acrobat planes performed a flyover in Riyadh to mark the official start of the G20 summit. Saudi Arabia opened the G20 summit in a first for an Arab nation. Take a moment and enjoy the show. The aerial challenge is moving across Kenya, improving Kenyans' lives by saving them money, offering brilliant stain removal in one wash. Let us see which detergent removes stubborn stains. Watch out for the aerial challenge coming to a town near. Rock Industries brings you rock plastic with a variety of kitchenware, ranging from kitchen dishes, cups, plates, cloth line pegs, spoons, and even rulers for learners. All this coming in your preferred size, beautiful colors and texture, and our products are one shop away from where you are across the country. All Rock Industries limited products are 100% virgin raw material that is cost friendly. For these and more products, contact our offices on 0722575619 or 0736028181. You can also visit our offices in industrial area Ndume Road off Longa Longa Road, Nairobi. Arthi Waterworks Development Agency has moved. The new space is bigger and better. We have renewed our commitment to accelerate access to clean water and improved sanitation. Visit us at Arthi Water Plaza on Muzaiga North Road off Kiambu Road. Arthi Waterworks Development Agency, accelerating access to water and sanitation. Ah, Helen Paul. Hello, madam. Would you like to join us on this mission? Yes, but how? Just one question for you. 
How do you keep your toilet clean? I use regular detergent and bleach for washing and removing yellow stains. I've been using it for years. Oh, madam, the regular detergents and bleach are used for washing clothes. To disinfect your toilet properly, you need Hapik 10X. It is specially made for germs and stains removal. Hapik's thick formula settles on stains and gives 10 times better cleaning compared to regular detergents and bleach. Wow, now I'm convinced, Helen Paul. Really? Yeah. Now that she's part of the mission, the next house is yours. Kenya is on the rise. It is powered by you. You are innovative. You are passionate about the future. At Stima Sako, we are a reflection of you. We are a stable, financially sound institution providing tailor-made services to add value to your life, time and money. We are guided by your aspiration. We are Stima Sako, a true reflection of you. Jiko Koa, Kenya's highest saving, longest lasting and biggest Jiko cooks fast using half the charcoal compared to other Jikos. So you use less fuel and receive extra savings. Enjoy our great discounts and save an extra 500 Kenya shillings when you buy Jiko Koa at your nearest shopping outlet. Wa Kenya, he fight hatukuchagua, lakini... Tuko na choice. Tuchague kujilinda. Tuchague ku protect familia zetu. Tuchague usafi. Kuosha mikono. Kuosha manyumba zetu ndio tulinde watoto wetu na tuvae mask. Future yetu iko mikononi mwetu. Kenya, let's do it for the ones we love. Welcome back to NTV Weekend Edition. Now, raising a child with cerebral palsy is a big challenge for most parents who have to grapple with stigma, financial constraints, and lack of access to health facilities to help manage or treat the condition that's caused by impaired muscle coordination. But a faith-based rehabilitation center in Eldoret is trying to offer hope to such families. Our reporter Gabriel Kodaka visited the center and has this story. At the Anglican Church of Kenya's North Rift Rehabilitation Center, a caregiver offers physiotherapy therapy services to a child with cerebral palsy. Most of these children are from households that cannot afford physiotherapy charges in hospitals. Nilikuja kama mkono ya right kama imejikunja. Sai ukimshika naweza shika kitu, kumpea kitu anaweza shika. The center offers physiotherapy services on a daily basis for outpatient cases, but those from afar are allowed to board for a period not exceeding two weeks. This facilitates closer monitoring. If at all physiotherapy is not done more frequent, you may not realize any change. When I start from the brain, the spine, then I'm able to reach other areas. Besides the physical challenge, stigma and discrimination are other hurdles that children with cerebral palsy face. Wazazi ambao wamefungia watoto wao kwa nyumba, wakaweza kuwatoa hao watoto ili wapate msaada. So one challenge is that these parents cannot go out to do any business or to be in full-term job if they cannot because they cannot leave these children. The founders of this rehab center initiated some income generating projects such as this guest house, to help sustain the facility. But the outbreak of COVID-19 has dealt them a blow. And when we don't have guests, then it means therefore we can't take care of any admission. And we may not be able also to have physiotherapy because there are some items that we, we buy. But for the needy children who can access the center, they are provided with a sense of belonging that gives them hope for a brighter future. Gabriel Kudaka, NTV. All right, on that note, it's time for another break, but do stay with us. Now, Halloween was celebrated at the end of last month, but these spooky images are pretty cool, so we thought we'd share them anyway. 
In a quaint village an hour north of New York, an annual Halloween bash gave out the chills to many visitors. More than 7,000 hand-carved pumpkins came to life for a sound and light show in the gardens of the historic Van Cortlandt mansion, giving visitors a scary treat. Check that out. We all are looking for products to protect ourselves from viruses, but not all products protect us. Did you know that using Dettol soap and water protects against viruses? Many viruses are surrounded by an envelope with receptors that enable them to enter a human cell and cause infection. Dettol soap destroys the outer layer of the virus and effectively removes it. Protect your family from the spread of viruses with Dettol. Dettol cleans and is now tested and proven to be effective against COVID-19 virus. This has been Medifax for Dettol. Nestle CeraVita with Green Smart, a smart combination of vitamins, iron, and minerals that gives children the nutrients they need for a great start for school. New Nestle CeraVita with Green Smart, also available in a small affordable pack. So, Villa Nasema, watch in the Kubati statistics. Nekunagami Alfmoja Miltano, to the Quadrapo Gamia, Nakua Alfusita, Alfumbiri na Tengeneza Leather, na Tengeneza Viatu, Wallet, Kibeti, Nauza Hapa, na Batia Weber fifty per cent. Ah, watch in the work credit in the Kupigi. Nam Nagani Weber, he my boy, who is one of credit Kira, sir. Come on, Nunua Yosimia Wadafon, calling Viber to Viber is zero shillings per minute, and it is not expensive. Only 2,999 Kenya shillings. Alo hali wali wa 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 wa. Hata fudali hiyo credit ikai ni nunuwe simu basi. Faibika leo na Waterphone for only 2,999 Kenya shillings. It will always be free to call fiber to fiber. Every time Gran arrives, she always has a small reward for her. I made this for you today. Ah, thank you my baby, it's so beautiful. Wow. She's happy and I trust it because it's made with milk and other carefully controlled ingredients without any colorings or preservatives. K has been taken to make it. <laughs> I love to see her happy because it meets her taste and fantasy. Kinder Joy, my trust, their joy. From far with you, mm. I even gifted you a magnificent house. Hmm. Rosa, it's the thought that counts. <laughs> Please help me. Uh, when it comes to fever, you need to be both. Panadol Baby and Infant starts to work on fever in 15 minutes and is gentle on the tummy. Panadol Baby and Infant, tough on fever, gentle on your child. With the Stay Soft Refill, saving money is as easy as snip, pour, mix with water and shake. Stay Soft Refill, it's two liters of Stay Soft for up to 30% less. Across the border now, the Ethiopian government has taken a hardline stance against the leaders of the region of Tigray, saying it will not hold talks with them and call them criminals. 
The latest position by the government threatens to escalate an already bad situation with hundreds feared dead and with barely any progress at mediation. The United Nations is now warning that further conflict could trigger a humanitarian crisis. Three former African heads of state have been appointed by the African Union to try and resolve the conflict between the government and the militia of the Tigray People's Liberation Front. The government, however, has already rejected the offer, believing in its own ability to solve the internal conflict. Now, children may not be the face of the pandemic, but they risk being among some of its biggest victims as their lives are being changed in profound ways. This art installation in northwest England shows a child's face made out of sand. The work, supported by UNICEF and entitled 6,000 Children, aims to raise awareness about the situation of over 6,000 children who are at risk of dying from indirect causes of the COVID-19 pandemic. Access to essential services like routine immunization has already been compromised for hundreds of millions of children and threatens a significant increase in child mortality. Many others living under restricted movement and socio-economic decline are in greater jeopardy of violence and neglect. Now, in your Junior Spot magazine that's found free in your copy of the Daily Nation, tomorrow pupils from Makongeni Estate give us a tour of their kitchen garden where they grow their own food. Miss Consolata shares tips on how to form good, lasting habits in the teacher's corner. And in the wildlife section, a hilarious honey badger teaches us to be bold and never give up in life. That's in your copy of The Daily Nation tomorrow. All right, this sports news is coming up next. But as we break, check this out. A 45.5 meter or 150 foot deep diving pool with artificial underwater caves and Mayan ruins is the world's deepest such structure. And that opened near Warsaw this weekend. The complex, named Deep Spot, even includes a small wreck for scuba and free divers to explore. Pretty cool. Don't go far, we'll be back in a moment. Cocoa, Kenya's highest saving, longest lasting and biggest Jiko cooks fast using half the charcoal compared to other Jikos. So you use less fuel and receive extra savings. Enjoy our great discounts and save an extra 500 Kenya shillings when you buy Jiko Koa at your nearest shopping outlet. Kila kitu upendacho kwa Mpesa kupitia star 334 hash.
we had not gone into PPEs right now, we wouldn't be having this opportunity to tell the story of how equity helped the local sector. There's a lot more that we can do locally. Let's explore and let's see what we can do. Even if you do not use credit as often, it is good to have the ability to do so in the event of an emergency, as well as help establish a good credit rating and a subsequent possibility of obtaining additional credit. Visit www.stimasaku.com forward slash credit products forward slash for more information. We are a reflection of you. We are a stable, financially sound institution providing tailor-made services to add value to your life, time and money. We are guided by your aspiration. We are Stimasako, a true reflection of you. Benefits of African or long tea. Good for slimming without side effects. It should be used with hot water only, no sugar or milk. It helps to reduce the rate of aging. It cuts back the infectivity of bacteria and makes weight loss easier. African All Long Tea is a proudly Kenyan tea brought to you by Akman Limited. It's available in all leading supermarkets, chemists, gift shops, and Jumia online. To place an order or get in touch with us, contact us on the listed address on your screen. Did you know? Did you know? At Ruiru Mabati Factory, you can open an account and leap up pole pole at your convenience. Did you know? At Ruiru Mabati Factory, you can get customized sizes according to your roof plan to avoid wastage. Did you know? Ruiru Mabati Factory offers free delivery countrywide within 72 hours. To order, call us now on 0111-050-700. Ruiru Mabati Factory, Mali Safi, Kwa Bay Poa. What is this? A charm with an R? Yes, it's a woman's charm. For sure it doesn't belong to my boss, Rafael. Isidro, Isidro, Isidro. Yes, take him to the hospital. I'll meet you there. I've got a girlfriend now and I can't crazy believe about it. her. Let's come, go. come, I'll introduce her to you. Renata, Jeronimo Linares. Get your value-added plot today by cash or through our installment plan. Call us today on 0790-300-300. Optiven Limited, the pay status in real estate. Welcome, this is the Sports News and the Football Kenya Federation has asked Premier League clubs to submit names of 30 players and staff who will be tested for COVID-19 from tomorrow ahead of the new season. In a letter seen by NTV Sport, FKF also says match officials will be tested before the season kicks off at the end of the week. Well, even as FKFPL hopes to be allowed to kick off the new season, clubs are still preparing for it. Champions Gormahi Posta Rangers and newly promoted Nairobi City Stars competed in a pre-season round-robin tournament at the Nairobi Showground. After the tournament, new Kogalo coach Roberto Oliveira defended his qualifications as coach, despite CAF banning him from the Champions League due to the mandatory Class A coaching license. Oliveira outlined his plans and style for the Champions. Champions League in Rio, in Rwanda, okay? I qualified in, in Tunis and uh, start Tunisian for Confederation Cup, okay? And so I know sometimes and uh, the football have a small problem, but it's not a big problem because uh, and uh, I have an experienced uh, player, ex-player in national team and uh, as a coach 25 years. Patrick Kipngeno and Francisca Kanda are the winners of the Athletics Kenya Mountain Running Championships, which took place around Mount Longanut in Naivasha, Nakuru County. Kipngeno from Nakuru won the 10-kilometer senior men's race after 50 minutes and 37.5 seconds. Titus Kimutai of Elgeo Maraquet was second, as Michael Kamau from Nyandarwa finished a third. In the 8-kilometer senior women's race, Francisca Kanda of Elgeo Maraquet cut the tape in a time of 48 minutes and 11.5 seconds. Beatrice Cesarek from Elgeo Maraquet was second as Judith Career from Elgeo Maraquet came in third. 
athletics, we have, um, we have had sessions, we have had seminars with, with all those athletes who have been put in the registered testing pool. And we have taken them through the requirements of whereabouts, because that is the, the, that is the latest challenge that we are seeing uh, at the moment, uh, that uh, we, 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 we are having a problem with a few of them not, not, not telling the truth about their whereabouts. So we have taken them through, we have had sessions with them, and we hope that as we go into the new year, we don't hear that kind of thing again. Now, breaking a marathon world record is not an easy feat. It is a team effort that starts in training all the way to race day. Isaac Masharia knows this all too well. He paced for Patrick Macau back in 2011 when he broke the record during the Berlin Marathon. Masharia spoke to our reporter Joshua Makori about that experience. <laughs> Eh, huda pata ile glory ama ile sifa eh, na tukiangalia pande zingine hata ile price utapewa eh, sana sana pesi mika hawajua hatuwajui hawa, wako tunywa so ya kwanza huyu ni mtu mwenye amejitoa kusaidia eh, amejitoa for a cause kusaidia kitu itendeke so ni kama umejipeana usurubiwe <laughs> na mwingine apate hiyo nini kama hiyo. yesu vile Hiyo ni kujipea. Afe msalabani, alafu sisi tuishi vizuri. Ndiyo hiyo sasa. So <laughs> we unajipeana, mwingine apata rekodi. Lakini hakuna rekodi itakuja kusemekana eh, ni ya huyu na huyu. Huyu umesaidia, hameipata. So, pisi mekazi ni watu wako na roho safi, roho nzuri. Roho ya kupenda vitu mzuri na kutakia wengine mazuri. So, kama we huuna hiyo roho ni mbubu kufanya pisi meki. Jambo la pili, Pacemakers ni watu very patient. Sababu unaona hustahili kusaj katika pacemaking. Unavuta watu, unawakimbisha sana, tena unawalegeza pole pole. Inataka uwe very consistent. So ni lazima uwe very patient. Sababu unakimbia ubari wa 30 kilometers. Saa zingine mwili na kuambia, tukosawa tunaweza kimbia zaidi. So kama wewe si mtu patient, utaharakisha na umeharibu mpangiria wa siku. Now the National Duathlon Championship took place today in Mombasa where the team was where a team was selected at the end of the competition that drew 70 competitors from Mombasa, Kilifi, Kwale, Machakos and Narok a team of 16 was selected in the senior and junior categories. In elite uh, men's competition Kennedy Ocheng led David Ndatha and James Mwara to the podium as Alfred Chola won the junior elite class followed by John Paul Makona in second and Victor Tello in third. Mercy Pwande beat Catherine Kariuki to first place as Mildred Akini took third place in the elite women's class. Josette Njeri and Vivian Hiller will represent Kenya in the junior elite class. The team will compete in the Africa Duathlon Championship next month in Rwanda. The competitors took part in cycling and running but swimming was excluded. World football's governing body FIFA and World Cup 2022 hosts Qatar celebrated two years to kick off on Saturday as the preparations for one of the globe's largest sporting events continue amid the coronavirus pandemic. The celebrations took place across different digital platforms with fans joining from across the world. Speaking about the Qatar World Cup at a virtual health 